Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Check out the link below, fool.com forward slash the smattering, to get access to the 10 best stocks to buy right now. Hey everybody, Brookfield Infrastructure just reported earnings and it returned in yet another solid result. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering. I'm here with Jeff Santoro and we're going to talk about Brookfield and some reasons why I think it is absolutely worth buying right now. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm really excited to talk about Brookfield. I want to remind everyone if they like our videos to please subscribe and to also check out our podcast called The Smattering. You can find it on any uh, podcast app that's out there. So Jason, Brookfield, good quarter, interesting business, a lot of tailwinds behind it with all the infrastructure spending we can expect. What'd you like about the quarter? All right, Jeff, I'm just going to share right here the, some, some information from the company's uh, earnings report. So you see here, we have the two columns on the left. This is the quarter. And then the two columns on the right, this is the year. First thing, FFO, funds from operation. This is the proxy for earnings per share that's really useful for very heavy real estate, long-lived asset owners like Brookfield. So on a per unit basis, FFO increased about 15% in the quarter, and it's up about the same so far this year, maybe a little more year to date. Continue to raise distributions, which is um, partnership speak for dividend, raise that about 6%. Now here's what's happening. The payout ratio, meaning the percentage of earnings uh, that are left over after it pays out that distribution fell. That's a really good thing. Last year, it was close to 75% for the full year. It's down to 67%. And Jeff, you know what that says to me? That says this is a business. Again, you think about the long-term performance as an investment that's been driven by dividend growth. It tells me that we can probably read the tea leaves and they're going to be able to continue growing that dividend at a really, really high rate. So again, this is showing how that's played out since it IPO'd. And it IPO'd actually at a pretty terrible time back in 2008 in the middle of the global financial crisis. The stock fell pretty sharply right afterwards. But you see there was a one-time special dividend. And then you saw dividend increases at least one, sometimes two times a year. The dividend's up 818% since going public, 934% in total returns. Jeff, from a company you've, most people have probably never heard of that you don't even know what they do, would you take 10 bagger returns? Yeah, no, I think that's fine. I would take that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good, especially considering the S&P's 239% total return over the same period was very good, right? So this is just a very strong business. Looking forward, we really just want to know what the business is going to do for us going forward. It's great to know what it's done. That's awesome. That's the legacy, but that's money other investors have, have made or you've already made if you're a shareholder. What's it going to do for us going forward? I really want to focus on the, the global trends that are driving this business. And this is all about infrastructure spend that needs to happen. So you think about in the developed West, Europe, North America, um, Japan, right? More developed countries and aging infrastructure is a problem. Infrastructure needs to be modernized, needs to be improved. You think about the trend that's happening around the world, the growth of the global middle class. This is more people with disposable income that are gonna want internet access, other telecommunications tools that are gonna wanna be able to travel, things like roads, uh, ports. They're going to have disposable income to buy goods. That's gonna, they're going to need the infrastructure for supply chain for that. Clean water, power, right? All of those things fall right in Brookfield's wheelhouse. So Brookfield Infrastructure, the subsidiary of Brookfield Asset Management, the parent company that's kind of the top of the funnel where the dollars come in to look for these opportunities. $94 trillion by 2040, Jeff, is a tremendous, tremendous amount of money. Now, lastly, why Brookfield can, can leverage that and continue to beat the market. You think about the way they've structured their business. I'm going to start with number two and number three first. Plenty of capacity to continue spending money. They already have um, a targeted backlog of about two and a half billion dollars. And currently they have more than six billion dollars in, in opportunities out there that they can participate in to expand capacity, a lot of CapEx investment. Um, and also buying assets and then asset rotation. They're really good. Once they acquire an asset at a low multiple, they find something that meets their benchmark to grow, to expand the cash flows of that asset. At some point, it gets relatively mature and its ability to grow cash flows going forward might not fall within Brookfield Infrastructure's targets. They're really good at then selling those assets at a premium. 
Um, there are lots of buyers out there for these kind of assets that'll pay a premium just to get a locked in cash flow. They have a really good history of doing that. Then they free up that capital, go back to number two and reinvest it back into it. Two of the big buzzwords out there right now, Jeff, in, um, um, inflation and foreign exchange, right? In inflation is killing everybody's budget. It's actually a bit of a tailwind for Bookfield, right? Because they have relatively fixed costs for their assets, but they have contracts and index pricing that with inflation, it moves the pricing they collect higher. It's been a tailwind for the business. On foreign exchange, one of the things that they try to do is things like when they take out debt to improve those assets, they do it in the dollar that or the, the local currency, right? So that it balances out um, the dollar, the, 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 the returns that they get from the investment back into that asset. And then they also use hedges where they can to hedge their foreign currency um, risk, right? The exchange risk. And they've proven really, really good at being able to protect those dollars and to build a business that's inflation and recession resistant. And the bottom line, Jeff, you know, again, we talk about the long-term performance of the business, the process they have, the culture that management has in place, their ability to allocate capital really well. I think Brookfield right now has to be at the top of the list, whether you're a dividend investor, you're looking for great long-term total returns. I think you really need to be thinking about Brookfield infrastructure.